folks, this is another installment in the automating my glass blowing torch with Arduino <clears throat> prototype. And I've found the perfect size stepper motors for this project and was able to acquire 100 of them for 99 cents a piece. And they're just about perfect size to tap on the end of these knobs. And they have enough torque to turn the knobs perfectly. And they are nice, clean little motors. So, awesome. Now, I am going to do this all digitally with digitally controlled sliders with an iPhone app or an iPad app or an Android app or something or other. But um, <clears throat> Electronics Gold Mine is this place this website online that's just super killer you can go there I spent about a hundred bucks and I got a 40 pound box of assorted electronic components badass LED lights and a baggie of these slide pots potentiometers that allow you the slider um, so I'm emulating what the interface is going to look like on the computer program that drives this so this is just a little little prototype, right? Um, each stepper motor driver that I have is capable of driving two steppers from one Arduino. Um, I'll probably get a get a um, an I/O multiplier so I can drive three stepper motor drivers from one Arduino, and that way get all six motors going from one Arduino instead of spending, you know, money on three Arduinos and three shields. Or I'll just build my own custom PCB and shield now that I'm learning how to do all this stuff better and get make a, a, a shield that will drive six stepper motors. So here's the idea is that this torch has six knobs. It's got two knobs and that is because it, it has a... Let's see if we can get some better light here. If you can see that. It's got an inner ring and an outer ring. I don't know how good I'm showing as you here. There's an inner ring and an outer ring, basically. And each ring consists of a bunch of these little tubes. And each little tube is a little individual flamelet. And each tube is actually a tube within a tube within a tube. And why that is, is because the very center tube in each of those little things is the super oxygen, the blue. The red knobs is the middle tube in those little tubelets, and that is the propane gas. And then the green knob is the outer tube, which is the normal outer oxygen. And so you can drive a flame on just the outer oxygen and the, and the propane like a normal old school torch. But by having the center fire turbo oxygen, they call it, that allows you to super finely tune your, your flames, it gives you much more power and control over your flame. Unfortunately, it makes your torch have a lot more knobs. So now I've got this torch with six knobs, and when I've got a hot piece of glass in my hands in front of the torch here, um, that can become a problem if I want to change the flame. Uh, it's going to, you know, I have to take one hand off and balance the glass somewhere or put it in the kiln while I adjust the flame. And that can really slow you down and it can keep you from doing some cool effects with the glass. So what I want to do is be able to have a set of knob, have a set of these motors attached to the knobs with a bracket that holds the back of them here. So each knob will have a motor on it and there'll be a half pipe bracket around the back that holds the backs of the motors so they can torque in on these knobs and then I'll have a separate controller with six sliders and what I, the idea is that I want to be able to move an individual slider per knob to dial in a certain flame and once I have that flame dialed in I want to press a button and speak the name of that flame so if I dial in a laser flame I want to be able to say laser and then have I have a voice recognition module shield for my Arduino here that's going to allow me to do that so you'll be able to have 36 preset flames that you can speak out loud 
to set your torch and it will uh, go ahead and turn all the knobs for you really quick and adjust the flame without you having to take your hands off the glass. So let's, um, let's go ahead, I've got a little 9 volt power supply here hooked up and hopefully we can see this. There's little flags of tape on the on the uh, motors so you can see them spin and they just do a little spin when they first fire up and then you can see that as I push the slider it spins the, the torch knob and it's an exact step there's an exact number of steps and I figured out that each of these torch knobs can rotate about three 360 degree turns um, from close to open so the slider will spin the one full slide will spin the motor three times same thing over here boo 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 boo, boo. so um, and you know you so you can dial in a flame pretend we're dialing in a laser flame you would dial it in get it set exactly how you want meanwhile you're watching the torch over here and getting the flame dialed while the knobs spin and then you would you know, press some kind of button and say laser and it would beep at you and say that it got it and then you could go ahead and move on and say okay now I need to make a bushy flame so let's open up the outer ring close off the center ring a little bit and get a big old bushy flame off of here and now press a button and say bushy and beep beep at you and then the idea is to be able to put it in a mode where you're blowing glass, you basically just light the torch by opening one propane center fire knob, just the tiniest of bits, and that will uh, allow you to get some propane here so you can light it with a lighter so your torch is lit. And then when you turn this machine on, it will spin each knob until it feels them torque all the way closed so that it knows where zero is and it will it, then it will calibrate its internal state table so that it knows exactly where zero is so if I say set this knob to zero it will completely close the knob and each of these motors has 20 steps per 360 degree revolution so every time it goes around a full circle it has 20 steps um, so basically I have 60 steps between closed and open on one of these knobs and so I can set you know when when I get a flame I'll preset with all six sliders in place it'll basically have a number for each slider like say you know 12 22 42 you know 59 49 whatever it is right and that's your preset and then when you recall a preset by speaking the name of the, the flame, it will tell each motor to go to, it will tell this motor to go to 12, and this motor to go to 24, and this one to go to 42. It would tell them to go back to the preset where you had discovered the perfect flame. And these knobs will all just turn for you really quickly. I mean, you can see that this thing can go fairly fast as far as how fast it can spin the knobs and that's um, that's way I uh, you know I'm only letting it spin right now at uh, 200 rpms they can spin it up to a thousand rpms so I could make it go faster but I think this is going to be plenty fast and you don't want it to go too fast or you could cause some uh, like popping and crackling of the flame by having a weird mixtures of oxygen and propane while the knobs are turning different directions but uh, I'm pretty happy with this little prototype uh, proof of concept. It just proves that this is going to be a total workable project. And, you know, I kind of like the, the analog sliders here, although I will make a digital version. But I'll probably make two versions. I'll probably make an analog version that just has six, six sliders and a button to record the name of a flame. And then I'll probably make a full-blown digital one that's a... Android app and iPhone iPad app that has sliders and presets and blah 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 and all that kind of stuff so pretty fun stuff coming along here and a uh, couple quick previews of what else I'm working on in my electronics uh, home kit here is my Arducopter 
quad mega. Uh, it's still in assembly mode, but as you can see, this is quite a big uh, quadrocopter driven by an Arduino brain down inside of here and some pretty beefy motors with great big rotors and uh, telemetry modules with XB telemetry so I can get airspeed, uh, battery power, RPMs of my motors, all that kind of good stuff as well as a GPS module here in the top and a magnetometer to keep it properly balanced and then I also have not yet installed but I have a bunch of XB components here for telemetry that allows me to hook this to my computer, my laptop and go ahead and set waypoints in a, a Google Earth style application that allows me to um, uh, fly this thing much further than I would be able to just on my uh, RC control which I have right here so here's my nice uh, Spectrum DX8 channel RC control and this is what I'll use to take off and land with the copter and then I'll be able to set GPS points in Google Earth and this thing can fly uh, you know it can fly up to miles away depending on the battery life and follow those waypoints and at each waypoint it can stop and take pictures and whatnot and I do have on the way a camera on a gimbal swivel mount that can look left and right and up and down that will be mounted right where the cockpit would be and I have a pair of goggles coming with LCD screens in them and accelerometers in them so while I'm flying this thing I'll wear the goggles and I'll be able to see what that camera that's on the gimbal mount sees and as I turn my head left and right and look up and down the camera mounted in the cockpit of the hel helicopter will do the same thing so it'll feel like I'm actually riding in the helicopter which is pretty cool I think and uh, so yeah this thing is pretty cool I've been taking on too many projects here and my next project that's the next step up in all this home manufacturing stuff just came today and that is a MakerBot Thingomatic 3D printer that I'll be able to print parts for um, this torch project and parts for this helicopter projects and parts for you know random cases for my Arduino projects and whatnot so I'm gonna have a whole home manufacturing little system here shortly and I have tons of plans for building very cool stuff out of all of this um, and combining it with my glass blowing studio that I'm just building in the garage and my egg bot that I will be etching glass orbs with with crazy geometric patterns and then remelting them down and making sculptures and then printing out crazy bases on my 3D printer which also I'm building a 3D scanner attachment for so you can put an object inside of it and have it get 3D scanned with a Kinect from Microsoft their Kinect controller thing mounts in there with a little you put your iPhone in this little attachment with a connect and it spins around and takes pictures and combines them into a 3D point cloud for you. So as you can see I've been completely bitten by the electronic embedded uh, microcontroller bug and it was all started by this project. I wanted to automate this glass blowing torch um, and I fell down the rabbit hole and I found that I really enjoy working on not only software development but hardware development and you know you get a big rush out of building writing some software and having it run perfectly on a computer you get a much bigger rush out of building some hardware writing some software installing that software on the hardware and having it all work together seamlessly so I would highly recommend anybody who's interested in who's a, who's a coder already um, go pick yourself up some Arduinos and some electronics